Hello oh, and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Erin Guys, bringing you your daily Rangers update, your team every single day here on Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. And if you want that news every single day, all you need to do is hit that sub, ring that notification bell, and if you can give the video a like, guys, it does help out. Guys, thank you so much for your phenomenal support for the channel over the last, well, not even 100 days, guys. We are growing exponentially. We are flourishing thanks to your amazing support we love reading your comments we love we always try and answer your comments we love interacting with our Glasgow Rangers family just a reminder if you haven't already done so please go back and check out the podcast that we did um last night with um John Dalrymple from uh, Toronto Midtown Rangers Supporters Club uh, myself and Victoria talked to John about all things NASA as well as to do with the old firm game from last Saturday and obviously as well about Rangers fortunes in the future. Really interesting stuff. Please go back and check that out. Uh, was a fantastic interview to do with John. Anyway, we're going to talk about the latest news coming out of Glasgow Rangers. We've got a few things to get through again this morning. Obviously, the big news from yesterday is obviously the interview that uh, new Chief Executive Officer James Bisgrove gave to Rangers TV. Certainly um, encouraging to see someone from the senior management at uh, Rangers come out and talk to the media, something that obviously under the days of Douglas Park didn't seem to happen on a very frequent basis. And certainly a very encouraging interview given by James Bisgrove. More of that in a moment. We're also going to talk about the Jack Butland deal, which appears to have new information. It's a saga that appears to run and run. Um, more information about uh, defenders that are linked with a move to Glasgow Rangers in, in Austin Trusty and, of course, Jonathan Panzo from Nottingham Forest. Um, and, you know, a few bit, bits of pieces of other news as well around the club. So stay here for that. So let's start off by talking about this man here, James Bisgrove. Now, James Bisgrove obviously takes over officially as Chief Executive Officer on July the 31st. However, he gave an interview today to Rangers TV. And, and as I've already mentioned, it was a very refreshing interview, a very positive interview, an interview that for me kind of, I don't know, showed a positive direction for the club. And then we have someone who is a very forward thinking man at uh, in, in one of those key positions, someone who is you know, seeking to bring together John Bennett, Michael Beale, and the whole sort of um, playing and non-playing side of the club. You know, he really is a guy who seems to be extremely switched on, extremely focused to what is needed. Um, you know, a real... I don't know, vision, not visionary, but someone who has a clear vision, doesn't he, for the future of this football club, and and that is that is encouraging, you know. And I think the first thing I want to mention about what James Bisgrove had to say was, you know, his overwhelming commitment to want to interact with the fans. Now, something that the Rangers board have been criticised, rightly or wrongly, for in the past, having a kind of I don't know, an attitude of not wanting to speak to the fans, of not wanting to include the fans in, in, in their conversations about the future direction of the club, about you know how this club's going to work, about the decisions that have been made at board level. And some Rangers fans, again, rightly or wrongly, have kind of accused the club of taking the fans for granted, of you know just kind of taking the money and running, in effect, Um but James Bisgrove certainly seems, from what he was saying, to be very different from that. You know, he talked about the involvement they've already had with the Union Bears, with the um, with the Rangers Supporters Club, also with conversations with NASA, the North American Rangers Supporters Association, as well, and further meetings they've got planned with with, with fan groups as well, which was very very encouraging. In addition to that, uh, James Bisgrove spoke about the fact that there was a CEO um, fan um, engagement uh, forum planned at, at quarterly, so that, you know, four times a year you know he as the chief executive officer would speak to the fan base and get you know the kind of direct involvement of the fans as to where this club is going and also talk about decisions and you know whilst he kind of you know recognized that uh, you know that you can't please the fans all the time and they're not going to agree on everything he said at least it gave them an option to kind of explain to each other how they were feeling and why certain decisions were being made and I've got to say that's kind of what we want as Rangers fans, isn't it? You know, we as long as we're getting kind of involved in in that decision making process, that we've been told why things are happening, we've been told this is the reason for it, this is what it will mean, and this is how it will help the club. And I think that is exceptionally positive. And it does seem that John Bennett and James Bisgrove have very much more forward 
thinking attitude when it comes to involvement with the fans than perhaps past Rangers boards have rightly you know again that is an opinion that has been offered by some groups of Rangers fans in particular obviously Union Bears um, he also spoke about the fact that you know they wanted to set up a fan advisory group as well to talk that who would they would consult with the board again fantastic news again fan involvement again fan direction you know talked about the my Jazz membership and the membership involvement with the club and it was very very um positive in his praise for the fans and the support that they give to the club you know he said that obviously you know that he'd been there uh for four or five years now that he'd lived it breathed it uh that you know that he'd followed rangers home in a way that he'd been on their european trips uh you know that he know he knew and understood you know how much this club means to so many people you know he talked about the fact that rangers is a worldwide club has supporters in glasgow in scotland and right across the world and talked about how the club is very special um you know he talked about how amazing the atmosphere was at ibrox as well and you know how it was an immense privilege and a huge responsibility for him as a person to be involved with the club and to be given the responsibility he has been given to kind of drive this club forward you know that is for me encouraging what he said he seemed very positive about it he seemed to have you know a clear understanding i think you know of of what the club means to the supporters of how important it is to us the fans and you know as well that he is kind of a, a guardian a custodian for this club and you know that after he goes it will still be here and we will we will obviously in our generations of family will still be here supporting the club and taking this club onwards um you know he, he talked about the fact that he was looking forward to the opportunity to work with the board john bennett and michael beale the manager um you know he talked about the fact that uh there was a certain key positions as well that were open for um for appointment you know head of the academy financial officer uh commercial and marketing director and they were all uh, jobs they'd had conversations over already and that he said that he looked forward in the next few weeks to making announcements on that um you know he said that obviously that there was a clear strategy in place um through to 2025 that had been put in place by the board and by the manager you know and a clear direction you know, he said that um, in terms of whether it be the club functions at Ibrox or the training ground, he said that, that there was um, a clear objective there. And that objective was to be a successful football club and to become the dominant team in Scotland again. And it was important that they win, that Rangers win trophies on a regular basis. And this is more important, I think, have that in, impact on a European stage, which I think is very important in terms of as well, bringing in outcome and raising the profile of the club. Um, you know, so he'd already talked to John Bennett on about some of his focus areas and he identified nine focus areas. He didn't talk about all nine in the interview or else I guess the interview could have gone on all day. Um, you know, he talked about the fact that financial stability and financial um, success for this club was absolutely vital. And I 100% agree with that. We don't want to go down those dark days ever again. We want this club to be financially sustainable, to generate its own income and to move forward. You know, he turned about the fact that you know that the profitability profitability had returned he talked about the fact that um you know that that, uh, that there were four pillars underpinning this financial um success the first one he talked about was a season ticket revenue and he later praised the fans for over forty thousand season ticket sales again this season and over sixty thousand my jersey memberships um, you know, he said that obviously they had phenomenal backing in that terms. He also talked about the fact that they'd got uh, hospitality clients as well. I think it was 2000, he said, uh, renewing as well, bringing in a lot of a lot of money. He said that they'd taken as a club the commercial revenue for the club from eight million a season to 28 million a season in a four year period, which is fantastic. And he also talked about the match day and the European revenue, as well as, of course, the player trading model um, to bring in money. He talked about the fact that they need to have a competitive squad. He talked about the fact that players would be coming in. And he said, very in interestingly, the players would be going out and they'd already fielded calls from other clubs and had conversations with those players who would be leaving. And again, it, you know, and now I'm sure, as Michael Beale said in his interview, would be following very, very soon. I think what was very encouraging again was the fact that when he talked about this uh players in players out player trading model he talked about the fact that there was a clear plan in place that michael beale had put a clear recruitment plan in place obviously with the support of john park the chief scout 
And he talked about how the fact that the board and himself were all in agreement with that and were fully supporting what Michael Beale wanted. And I think that's that's a major thing, you know. Again, the the, the, the board are prepared to back Beale. There is clearly a desire there to push this club on and, and take this club forward to, to success in the future. And that was clear in what Bisgrove was saying that you know the board are fully behind Michael Beale. They are behind Beale's plan. They are you know, definitely clear on what they wanted to do. He said they'd had already had conversations with players and they were at advanced stages in some areas, in some talks with certain players. Again, he didn't name names. But that really is not obviously his responsibility to do that. He talked as well about, uh, interestingly, about the return of safe standing. That it was feasible to do that and that would be a conversation that they would be having and pushing forward. Uh, which, you know, I think a lot of fans that want that and do want to see a return to that end and do want to see that as an option will welcome. You know, we talked about obviously the updating of the facilities at Ibrox, the improving of disabled facilities at the club. Um, you know, he, he, he was very much having a clear vision to want to push this club forward, of wanting to raise the profile of the club even more, of wanting to increase a positive image with the media, with the close of the SPL, with everyone, you know, as regards the club and taking this club forward. You know, that recruitment word kept coming up. The, you know, the, the, the idea of pushing the club forward and making the right appointments was something that he spoke about at great length during this interview. Um, he talked a lot about his, his good relationship with Michael Beale, with John Bennett. Um, and look, the overwhelming feeling that I got from the interview, the overwhelming kind of uh, understanding I got from what John, uh, from what James Bisgrove was saying was very positive. It was encouraging. It was positive. There was a clear direction there. There was a clear passion there for the job as well. And, you know, I, and I think I'm very optimistic for the future under James Bisgrove and John Bennett. You know, he talked about John Bennett obviously having a clear vision for the club as well. There does appear to be a clear direction now at the top of the club and a desire to have fan involvement as well as the right recruitment of the summer. A very positive interview indeed from James Bisgrove. And I think as a fan base, we should be very encouraged by what Bisgrove had to say today in this interview. And like I said, it was great to see someone from the top echelons of the club coming out and talking to the media and indirectly obviously talking to the fans. Um, and that the, another big one for me, of course, is the involvement of the fans in terms of the conversations he's already had with Union Bears, RSC, with NASA, and obviously the fan forums quarterly, as well as obviously that fan advisory group. So again, very, very encouraging from James Bisgrove. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about this young man here, Jonathan Panzo. It now appears that Jonathan Panzo is a more realistic defensive uh, reinforcement for the club uh, than Austin Trusty. Austin Trusty, the USA international who is currently with Arsenal. Um, had a very successful loan spell with Birmingham City. Um However, it appears that Arsenal have a different plan for him in terms of any sell-on fees um, and obviously in terms of what they plan to do with him next season. So it appears that that is pushing Rangers out of being able to get hold of Trusty. However, it does appear that Panzo is available for transfer and obviously Rangers have been linked with him and that there's a possibility that Panzo could be one of those players brought in this summer. Certainly some uh, pundits and some analysts feel that Panzo would even be a better bet than um, Trusty. You know, more experienced, um, a very strong player, a very direct tackler, a very physical guy, someone who could stand up to the rigours of the Scottish Premier League. His name is obviously Jonathan William Panzo. He's 22 years old, so still quite young, from Broccoli in England, six foot one. Um, coming in with Coventry, who've just gone to the Championship playoff final to play the pub team that is Luton. Um, he is he you know he is an interesting character he started his career um with monaco's second team before playing a couple of games for monaco went on loan to circle bruges in uh, in belgium before playing for dijon um he returned to forest in 2022 uh, and then obviously went out on loan from forest to coventry uh, this past season where he's made 29 appearances scoring one goal he's represented england at under 16 17 18 19 and 21 level as well you know he's clearly a very talented boy a very physical but a physical player and again it's following that trading model isn't it you know that the trading model is all about bringing in players developing them and perhaps selling them on for bigger profits to then use to reinvest in the team and again bring through more players and someone like panzo at 22 is clearly someone who can be developed can be made better and there certainly is high hopes for jonathan panzo so you know panzo could be that 
with that person that comes in. You know, with the club possibly looking to move on Ben Davis this summer. Um, you know, yes, they have John Suter. Yes, they have um, Connor Goldson. But at the end of the day, there is need, I think, for defensive uh, reinforcements there. There is also, I think, you know, a need for a Panzo type player, someone who is no nonsense, someone who's physical in the tackle, someone who, you know, is rock solid at the back, um, you know, for Rangers. And I think Panzo could well be that player, a, you know, certainly a good and very interesting link for the club. More news today emerged about this young man, Jack Butler. Now, obviously, since uh, Robbie McCrory's come into the team and performed so outstandingly well, there's been a number of Rangers fans that feel that we don't need Jack Butler anymore. And someone like, say, for example, Ivan Pandor from Fortuna Sittard could be a better bet as a backup to Robbie McCrory. Now, obviously, there is um, kind of a, I don't know, a, a slight worry um, you know, about, about McCraw, you know, the, the, he's playing at a time when games don't necessarily matter as much. There's not as much on the line. You know, what happens if, uh, for example, um, you know, it's, it's, he doesn't have that same form at the start of next season. He struggles at the start of next season. What do we do then? You know, where do we turn then? You know, is McLaughlin going to be at the club and is he going to be the backup or are we going to go for someone else? Or is it a best case scenario if you bring in someone like Butland and Butland McCrory would compete over the summer for that uh, for that starting job? Now, a number of um, a number of media sources had been indicating that the Butland deal was uh, dead in because of the wage demands and the expense. However, it now appears that that is not the case; that the deal is an advanced stage, according to a number of Rangers insiders. Rangers appear to be obviously trying to get their ducks in a row when it comes to signing on players. The news yesterday, the Dujon Sterling deal is pretty much done. The Kieran Dowell deal seems to be pretty much done. Um, now it seems that the Butland deal is at an advanced stage. Um, so, again, it's all rumour, it's all supposition. But, you know, a question we've got to ask is, do we need Butland at the club? Are you more happy with McCrory there? Or do you think someone like Butland can come, come in and benefit? And would that lead to us losing Robbie McCrory? That obviously is a huge downside if someone like Butland comes in. But Butland isn't going to want to come to Rangers and sit on the bench now, is he? So you've got that to counter it with. So it certainly seems to be an interesting time. So obviously, you know, until we know something official, until we know something for definite, I don't think we can really 100% comment on that. But it does appear appear that there is rumours, very strong rumours amongst analysts and insiders that this is not a done deal This is yet, but it is at a very advanced stage and there is still a good chance that Rangers will secure the services of Jack Butland. Other rumours today is that um, uh, Rangers are also close to securing a deal for LAFC's Ecuadorian midfielder Jose Cifuentes, according to a report in the player's homeland. Again, like I said, a number of times these obviously reports have to be taken with a pinch of salt um 24 year old did represent his country at the world cup this year um he's been in la since 2020 but his current contract is expiring at the end of the current mls season which comes in december other than the traditional time like a normal season over here anyway um in terms of cifuentes it appears that this is still on the um on the cards given especially that he is free and will obviously not command a transfer fee certainly someone that rangers could look into in terms of boosting those midfield numbers and adding to those midfield numbers someone like cifuentes could certainly come in and do a job for the club um so there we go guys lots of news this morning lots and lots of things to talk about um you know in terms of the club obviously the biggest news obviously today coming out was what the interview yesterday that james bisgrove gave that very positive interview that very focused interview on what is best for this club and developing this club as well as a whole host again of transfer links and as i keep saying in these videos until we see things done for definite we are going to be linked with every man and his dog and his cat and his goldfish and his parrot called Bert, we are going to be on the lips of a number of teams, obviously a number of papers, of media outlets, because of the fact that this club is such a massive club. And it is well known that Rangers need that rebuild over the summer. You know, it does appear, like I said, the Dow is done, Dujon Sterling is done. Um, it just now appears, that obviously, we need to move forward. Now, obviously, one of the big things that Rangers fans are concerned about, and rightly so, is what are we going to do as a form of centre-forward position? 
There is a need, I think, to bring in two if Antonio Cholak goes to Germany, like it's been indicated, to three centre-forwards. That is going to be a big focus for Michael Beal and the recruitment team and James Bisgrove this coming summer. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. As always, absolute pleasure speaking to you. Please drop me a comment below. I will try and reply to it as soon as I can. I do have a full-time job as well as this, so please bear with me. But thank you so much for watching. Please remember, if you've liked the content, hit the sub. If you ring the notification bell, put it to all. You'll always get our daily news. You'll always get our breaking news videos, our podcasts, our live streams, everything like that. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. It is phenomenal. And guys, remember, we are the people.